RealArtCulture.com presents Under the Microscope with BioVision Seed Labs. Now let's maybe, uh, there have been certainly uh, a lot of questions about fusarium da damaged kernels, uh, what they look like, um, you know, the level of them, those sorts of things, and, and you did mention that we are seeing more of that. Um, you know, what, what does that, are there things that sometimes get confused with fusarium damaged kernels? Well, absolutely. Fusarium damaged kernels can, in some cases, look like heat, heat stress or drought stress kernels. Okay. So, uh, grain breeders are, are looking at a number of things. First off, they're looking at those typical tombstone kernels, which is a white, chalky, mm -hmm. shriveled appearance. So, that's the first thing they look at. The second thing they look at is for any mold or fungus growing right on the kernel. So they'll start right at the germ tip end, that's usually where it will be, and they'll follow um, their their eyesight along the crease of the wheat as well, because that's also where the mold will grow, or the fungus will grow. Yeah. Now, it's not always pink, and that's what a lot of producers always think, it's pink, it's pink, it's not. It can be right from white to gray up to the pink coloration. So it, it's really important to have someone who knows what they're doing to be able to say, yes, these are fusarium damaged kernels. Right, and that's an important difference, obviously, um, obviously for for quality, but also for marketing. When you're when you're trying to sell this, um, knowing the difference between heat stress and and fusarium is a is a huge difference. Absolutely, absolutely, and 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 going forward, I think uh, fusarium uh, damaged kernels is going to become a more higher topic of discussion amongst producers. Um, specifically in Alberta this year, we're seeing a more FDK kernels and. Those have been around in, in southern Alberta for quite a number of years. It's, it's not a new story for southern Alberta. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of the, the higher percentages we're seeing in southern Alberta yeah. is definitely a story. But what we are also seeing is the FDA DK kernels are starting to show in in some of the east sides of Alberta as well. Okay. So, you know, that is obviously uh, causing some concern amongst producers and grain marketers in that eastern side of Alberta. Okay. Um Certainly on the on the marketing side or on the storage side, any of those things, um, you know, if a farmer's sending in a sample and it comes back uh, with some of these issues, so we've talked about midge damage that might be an early warning system to say, you know, it might be time to consider uh, an action plan for for midge uh, control. Um, certainly with, I mean, fusarium, we all know the big the big issue is fusarium can can then carry a vomitoxin for feed. So it, it limits your marketing options there. Um, you know, any, what, you know, what can farmers do uh, from a seed test to, or from, from a quality sample? How, how might that change their marketing decisions? Well, the, the primary thing to, is a producer to ask when they're getting their sample graded, uh, whether it's a lab or whether it is at an elevator, is to understand what is the basic grade as well. Now, the basic grade is the, the grade you can assign to the kernels itself okay. and taking out all the, the separables. So, for instance, uh, a grain can be graded number two on account of ergot, but the basic grade could actually be number one. So, the kernels itself meet, meet the standards for number one. So, the producers can then, from a grain marketing perspective, take a look, take their pencil and, and really decide, okay, does it make sense for me to clean Mm -hmm. out the ergot, uh, and get to, and attain the number one, or from a grain marketing perspective, maybe there's not enough um, difference between the two prices, and, and then decide that. So really defining, you know, what is your basic grade, and why did you get downgraded? Was it a count of mids? Was it a count of, of fusarium damaged kernels? Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind, if it is fusarium damaged kernels, um, it, it's not a process typically that producers will go and clean that up. Um, it, it they are tend to be lighter, but it it is something that's not typically done in the past. Mm -hmm. But they must be aware of when they're marketing it that there may be difficulties with the vomitoxin level. Mm -hmm. So non-ruminants such as hogs, uh, you you really don't want. Okay. So from a grain marketing perspective, FDK kernels are very important, especially from a feed standpoint. Now, if you have hogs or non-ruminants. You want to make sure that your vomitoxin level is below one parts per million. Um, if you exceed that amount, you're going to run into a situation where the hogs will refuse to feed, and then as a result of that, you're going to have 
not waking, et cetera. So it's very important to be considering your toxin levels as related to FDK. Now, and when you're talking cattle, they do have a little bit more capability to process the toxin levels, but again, you need to be very cautious 